Namaste and welcome to Vijayapatha. India is a land of spirituality. Many great saints, yogis and gurus were born in India and have offered their rich wisdom and a divine connection to the world. The Ramakrishna mission needs no introduction to most Indians and many around the world. Those of us who grew up in India have benefited from the publications and discourses by Swamiji or monks of the Ramakrishna order who have greatly influenced our outlook and our lives. The organization started in India more than a century ago and for those of you who are not very familiar to the, of the extent to which the impact of Ramakrishna mission has had over the world, it now has 221 branches around the world, including USA, Brazil, Canada, Russia, South Africa, Argentina, Australia, Fiji, France, Germany, Ireland, Japan, Malaysia, Mauritius, Nepal, Bangladesh, Netherlands, Philippines, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Switzerland, UK and Zambia. Isn't that wonderful? It's an amazing impact that the Ramakrishna mission has had over the world. This worldwide presence has its foundations in the lives and teachings of the Holy Trio, Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother Sarada Devi, and Swami Vivekananda. The Ramakrishna Matha and the Ramakrishna Mission have been engaged in various forms of humanitarian and social service activities under the leadership and blessings of lineage of Swamiji's. Today, we are truly blessed to have the divine presence of His Holiness Swami Ishatmanandaji of Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago here on our program. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Swamiji Ishatmanandaji, President of Vivekananda Vedanta Society. Namaskar. Pranam Swamiji. Namaskar, namaskar. How are you doing? Oh, fine, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to bless us today and to be with us. We are re truly blessed to be in your honor holy presence. I'm also so happy that you have invited me so that uh, the ideology that we are following that through your uh, uh, this uh, uh, media it can reach out to so many people. Thank you for inviting me. It is it is our honor uh, Swamiji and that is exactly what we would like to do. We have all heard of the great activities and the mission and we would like you to enlighten our youngsters more today. So thank you so much for taking uh, for coming over today. Um, would you like to please give a little bit more about the Ramakrishna mission? So youngsters, especially growing up here in USA, who may not be very familiar, can uh, understand a little bit more, please. Oh, it's a wonderful question. And I would love to, the, because you know, when Swami Vivekananda came to America, uh, to attain the parliamentary religion in 1892 in Chicago, he was the only Hindu and we can say only four or five Indians, they were in America. The India was not connected with America, India was connected with Europe and British was ruling naturally, he was there and the Dutch, the French, they were also present in India. So the Indians, they knew Europe but not the America. And in America, they came afterwards, they visited all the places Swami Vivekananda understood that we need organization. And without the organization, we cannot do anything. And in the, traditionally, the Hindu monks were not having any organization. We had the martyrs and the Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, he made the four martyrs and there, are, there were some asramas. The tradition was that someone will come, take the initiation and the sannyasa from the guru will, will be sitting with him for some time and then he will go in his own way. But the Buddhists were having some organizations, the Christians were having the organization. Organization is power and Swami Vivekananda felt it. 
So he wanted to start it. And in 1897, he started the Ramakrishna mission. And in 1897, the motto, the goal of the organization was Atmana Mokshartam Jagat Hitayacha, the, the liberation of one's own self and at the same time the benefit of the world. Now the monks, they will retire into the forest, into the caves and there they will meditate and then maybe they will get the liberation. But what about the society? The when they were born, they grew up, they took food and took shelter and the clothing, so much support all through the life they got from the society and in return what they are giving. So that Swami Vivekananda told hundreds and thousands of monks that you are surviving in the society, why don't you go out, spread out, go to the villages, go to the hamlets, teach them morality and teach that that you have to realize God, which is the source of peace and happiness. Whole pursuit in the human life is nothing but happiness and happiness is within you. So you have to develop that. And in the beginning, he said, as because after the long the ruling of the, the Sultanate and then afterwards the Britishers, nearly 800 long years, India lost everything, all confidence was lost. And that's why Shami Vivekananda cried out in one place. He's shouting and uh, he's telling, Lo, the descendants of the Rishis have become next door neighbor to brutes. The descendants of the Rishis, you know, the Indians, they are having the, uh, the uh, Modgulla Gotra and this Gotra, that Gotra. The Gotra means the tradition of the Rishis. Someone is to go to the school of a Rishi and from there they used to learn that became the Gotra afterwards. So that's why he said the descendants of the Rishis have become next door neighbor to brutes. So there he thought how to remove it, how to improve it. So he thought about the organization. So you will wonder in America as a before he started Ramakrishna Mission, he started in New York, the Vedanta Society. The Vedanta Society means the giving the self-confidence. When he came over here, he found that these people, they are good people having self-confidence and they are free. But at the same time, they are oppressed by a peculiar type of philosophy that constantly tell them that you are a sinner, you are a sinner, you are a sinner. And slowly, slowly they lose the confidence. They think that we are sinners. Then Swami Vivekananda, that is a, the unique way he said, it is a sin to call a man sinner. So we may do mistakes, but then we go back to God and say, I'm sorry, sir. That's all. Then again, you start your life. The Vivekananda started Vedanta society. And Vedanta means not only self-confidence, at the same time, respecting each and every being as the manifestation of the same God. That is Vedanta. He started the Vedanta Society in New York in long in 1894. He started that. And 1897, he started the Ramakrishna Mission in Kolkata. Mission, that is a different way because that time in India, no education was available for the ordinary people. No medical help. They were not getting anything. So Swami Vivekananda wanted to develop a group of young boys and girls. Then they will give up everything. He, he said, I want 100 brave boys and girls. And they will not bow down to anyone except the God. And will never expect anything from anyone. So brave lads would come, like he gave the call. So by that way, slowly, uh, the Ramakrishna mission developed. And as you gave, now it is all over the world. And you know the uniqueness? Ramakrishna mission never got any support from any rich community, like the business community or the government, nothing. They are just ordinary people. Our people, the Swamis, they go to house to house, collect the small 
donations, they bring that. And with that money, we are helping. Nowadays, of course, the, uh, the government of India, the, they also they give some support in the schools and colleges and hospitals. This is the Swamis, they are working. And that's why the Ramakrishna mission, and when it started, there was a lot of oppositions. Because in the Hindu society, the Swamis are supposed to sit in one place and practice meditation. And when the people are approaching them, giving them some uh, the advices and that's all. But here, the Ramakrishna mission Swami is going and picking up the orphans, serving the ill, the people, the suffering on the streets. And that way, it was completely a new thing. And the traditional sannyasins, they started criticizing Ramakrishna mission sannyasins. They told, no, you are uh, the Bhangi Sadhu, they used to call us, Bhangi Sadhu. <laughs> that you, you are not that high standards monks. The monks are supposed to meditate. But Swami Vivekananda said, as his guru Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna taught him, if you can see God by closing your eyes, can't you see God with open eyes? And you, you know you are studying in Vedanta again and again and practicing that. The each and everything that you see is nothing but the manifestation of the same God. Then how can you deny the man who is suffering is nothing but the God. The people, they are not getting education. Give them education. Swami Vivekananda then said, and wonderful, many of you know that, that my special object of worship are the poor, the downtrodden, the illiterate, the oppressed. They are my special object of worship and they are my living gods. So with that, the Ramakrishna mission is started. But he said in the Ramakrishna mission, you know, it's a monastic organization. So obviously he said, you should not, never, ever the join with politics. You should not do anything with the politics. Politics means power grabbing, obviously. Those who are doing the politics not for charity, they're doing it for power grabbing. The moment you join over there, you will be in some body, some group, and you'll be criticizing other group, you will be not helping other group, and you will lose uh, the, your identity as a monk. Because the monkhood is nothing but some taking the oath. And at the time of monkhood, it's not, everything is nothing but oath, you know? When uh, the people are marrying, what do they do? Just taking the oath before the fire, before the seniors, and before the priest, before the god, they take the oath. From today, we are going to be together and I am going to help my husband and I am going to protect my wife, that type of oath. And the monk also same way by touching the fire and also the Ganga water in front of the guru and the god, we take the oath, I am not going to hurt anyone. And if possible, last, up till last breath, I will try to help others. That is called monkhood. So Swami Vivekananda, established the Ramakrishna mission and uh, anyone can join. There's no, that the Brahmins only, the not the Shud, nothing like that. Anyone can join. When the Ramakrishna mission, it is for the boys and uh, that uh, the boys or after graduation from the college and if they are, if they're physically healthy and not having any other problem in the family, uh, like that and having the ideology of Swami Vivekananda. Service to man is service to God. So then they can come and join. And there's another also the organization called Ma Sharada Mission. There the educated girls also can join. There are many highly educated ladies. So they are there and the same way they're serving the, the Swami Vivekananda also, as he said, a bird cannot fly without two wings. So there also should be dedicated ladies. They are also there. The Sharada Mott and Ramak Sharada Mission and is Ramakrishna Mott and Ramakrishna Mission. 
Thank you. Th thank you, Swamiji. This is so insightful. I was actually going to ask you whether women can join too. So you've already answered that question. <laughs> so is the Ma Sharada mission also closely associated with the, the activities are closely associated with the Sri Ramakrishna mission as well? Or are they separate organizations, entities? There's a completely separate organization in the administration. Okay. Otherwise, ideolo ideologically, they're all the same. Correct. The same way they go. But Swamiji said, uh, you know, the Buddhist, they made a mistake by taking the boys and the girls together. And so a lot of complaints came and slowly, slowly uh, the ideology degraded. Okay. So, and the Christianity also the same type of problems are there. But uh, Swami Vivekananda learning from there, he said, the girls, you give the education and then take your hands off. You know that in those days, there's a, a lot of uh, in a conversation is to go a debate with the uh, whether the the um, widow should be married or not. So that debate on someone came to Swami Vivekananda and asked, so wh what is your opinion? Then Swamiji sarcastically replied, am I a widow that you are asking that question? <laughs> go and ask that lady, the lady, do you like to marry again? Her father thought that the marriage, she'll be happy. Now it is not. Again, she has become the widow and you people, the society leaders are thinking she should be given to marriage again. Why don't you ask her? Then she said, give education to the women and take your hands off. They will do their own thing. So on the basis of that, the Ramakrishna mission, the first, you know, the vows, the first vows were given by the Ramakrishna mission, President Swamiji, to eight ladies. And they were also Tapashinis. And then afterwards, it is their tradition. We never go to talk to them or mix uh, with them or uh, give any, uh, any, any way we are not connected. They are parallel, but the following the same ideology as we do. Correct. Very, very interesting for us to know. Thank you so much, Swamiji, for telling us more about it. And as you gave us a little bit of idea about um, how the monkhood begins. So you mentioned that anybody could join as long as they are physically fit and they also follow the ideologies. Mm -hmm. um, so could you please also tell us whether any monks can be chosen by the order or um, and also a little bit about how the training happens for monks. If you can give us some idea, that would be wonderful. So the Ramakrishna mission, uh, no, 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 that they will never choose anyone. The young boy, uh, about 18 when they come, uh, previously it was the high school grade, but now it is a graduation from the college. The, otherwise the maturity is not coming. You are taking a life are you sure about it? Are you serious about it? Because the monk's life is a constant till death. You have to fight with your mind because the what is the in the society, all temptations are there. But can you resist that? Unless and until you are having the tremendous confidence within yourself that no, I am going to control my mind, then so you won't be able to do that. So that's why they always say. That when they come, a young boy, when it comes, he can join in any center of the Ramakrishna mission anywhere in the world. And uh, as you know, that we have the Muslim monks also. They were Muslims and they came and then took the sannyasa afterwards. How it is? Swami Vivekananda said that we have to grow to the Brahminhood. And what is that Brahmin? The, uh, we have the, conf the confusion that uh, unless you were born in a Brahmin family, you were not a Brahmin. It is not. In the scripture, it says, the Janmanat Jayate Shudra, Samskara Dija Uchate, and Beda Dhyasi Bhavit Bipra, Brahma Gyanati, Brahma Janati, Brahmana. So, whenever the child is born, in whatever family it may be, that they are just like the animals. Why? Because they don't have any uh, conception. They will go and touch uh, something and everything. You know, the children, they'll be uh, the crawl, crawling on the floor. If they see uh, something, 
uh, maybe an ant, they will go and try to catch that and also put in the mouth. Then the mothers, the aunties, they will go and tell, no, no, don't do this. You should not do this. You should not do that. So the Janmanath Jayate Shudra. Shudra is, is a culture. What is that culture? The not understanding what one should do and what one should, should not. Then the Samaskara Dvija. When the, the parents and the guardians, they are helping that child to grow and to understand, you should not touch it. You should not put it in your mouth. You should not do in this way, that way. The slowly, slowly they grow the second birth. That is called human birth. Then Beda Dhyashi Bhavet Vipra, when they are studying, slowly they are becoming intelligent and that is called Vipra. The, the doctors, the engineers, the professionals are not the Vipra, they're using their brain. So obviously the scientists, they're all Vipras. The, then finally comes those who have realized the God, that consciousness in all being, that is called Brahmana. The, on the basis of this, the scriptural injunction, Shami Vivekananda said, each and every one should become Brahmana. So when a boy is joined, three years, he should be under the guidance of the Swamis. Whatever work will be given to him, he will do and not hanker for anything. Whatever food will be given, he should eat. And, you know, the different time, occasion comes that you have to control your anger. I will tell you one or two very funny incidents. And after the three years in that asrama, every day, early morning at about four o'clock, you should get up. And after the evolution, you should go and sit for meditation nearly what, two hours and then get the breakfast and then sit for again the study. And after the study, whatever the work has been given that you should attain. And after that, uh, again, the study will be there. Then the a food, a little rest. Again, there'll be study, scriptural study. Like that, it life goes on. You know, sometimes the young people, they'll be angry. And if they're angry, it will be marked that the little temptation immediately is becoming angry and wants to go here, there. Nothing like that. So you have to control, control, control. So, so many Swamis will be observing you. After that two years, rigorous training in the Belur Mart. I am telling only about the Ramakrishna Mission Swamis. Other Swamis, I don't know, but only Ramakrishna Mission, three years in the under the center under the head of the in-church. Then two years in the Belur Mart, the rigorous thing, you have to the you know the cut the vegetables, you have to clean the bathrooms, and you have to go and work uh, with the other Swamis in the garden, sometimes uh, in many places. And uh, and sometimes the senior Swamis will test you in uh, this way. In Belur Mart, we used to serve. The senior Swamis will be sitting, we are serving. And you know that serving means in India, people are sitting on the floor and uh, squatting. And we are carrying a bucket full of dal and, uh, and giving the... Then one Swami will say, give the dal only from the below. You know that, oh. or not the water, only that. Then you have to... I Belur Mart, <laughs> Right. Is, uh, not, you won't get that type of dal. Majority of the water, <laughs> yolo water, and then little. Yeah. You have to slowly find out and give it to him to satisfy. Next person observing. And the moment you do that, naturally it is mixed. Then he will say, don't give dal, only water. Then you have to wait. The <laughs> dal will go and settle. And then so you have to have a lot of patience right. in that way. Yeah. So that training was there. And sometimes in the uh, uh, shrine, you know, <laughs> they, they will be spreading the sprinkling uh, the chandan, white chandan, uh, the uh, on the white marble. And you have to be clever enough to find out where it is and then oh, clean wow. it. The attention should be there. And uh, you know, the, particularly in our time now, it has increased a little. With the, but at the, our time, it was really <laughs> the velumat was very poor. The breakfast was only two uh, the braids, and we used to call it transparent braid. But you could see from this side, that side. Wow. it's so thinly, through thin braid was there. You know what you used to do? We used to go and sit by the side of the very old Swamis, because the old Swamis will never take the braid, and it is not uh, toasted, only that uh, raw braid. 
and they, they used to think that no, he should not. So he used to go and sit by his side. So maybe that he will share his bread too with me. So <laughs> that like that he used to go, and he used to be all the time hungry, drinking only water. So, but you cannot say anything. Then this is the way. And uh, you are cleaning the two months, maybe duty in that shrine. Next two months, you have to clean the public toilets. And then next two months, you have to be in the kitchen. And then uh, like this, like this, everywhere you have to work and you have to prove that you are always the same mind. And then every Saturday, we used to have the vigil, whole night meditation. So the no food, the evening six o'clock, the prayer and the seven to next morning, four o'clock, the vigil will be there, meditation, prayer, and silently doing the japa. So this is the way the mind slowly, slowly develop. And when you are studying the scripture, you understand that this world is nothing but temporary. This physical body, and uh, it is going to change. And all the attractions that we feel outside is all temporary. So the, I can, I, I mostly I give the, now the example, a few years before, five years before, one man was so happy that he is going to be the president of America. After four years again, he is in misery that I am no more president of America. So it goes on. This is all temporary. No, everything is temporary. And why should we waste our time in this? The, by that to be a monk's mind, you know, it is not possible for everyone. It's for the that temperament that comes from, as we believe the Hindus, from the past birth. So the my brother and me from the same parentage, same schooling, same type of growing up, but he loves money. But I never loved that. He always wants the appreciation and from the society. He wants the car, he wants the best house. I never wanted that. And from the young age itself, he used to have the best dress and also the, the smell, spraying so that there will be smell. But I but, never liked that. Yes. Why? So that is that proves it is from the past birth. So the sannyasa means this is the training we get in the Belur Mod, and we are always humble before the seniors. Even one year senior, we have to go and touch the feet of that, and we have to listen to him. We never sit before the president Maharaj and other like that Indian traditional way. So that is the very unique training the Ramakrishna mission Swami is the gate. Uh, we never hate the the girls. We respect them as our mothers. Even the small little girl comes, we call the mother. Uh, but at the same time, we keep distances from them because it's the human life. So, and the monastic life is a completely a different way uh, to live. That's why sometimes some people don't understand that they misunderstand, particularly in the uh, European uh, situation. Correct. Correct. You are so right, Swamiji. Thank you so much for giving us more insight into how the training happens. Definitely very rigorous training. And, um, you know, everybody, I think, goes through a lot of experiences in order to make their mind strong and be ready for the next step uh, looks like. This is amazing, wonderful. And you did mention a little bit about your family. So um, just an interest for us to know, once you have attained monkhood, are you at liberty to meet your family or even during the training or after once you have assumed some position, do you still keep contact? And um, it is very different for layman, common man to understand. So if you are okay to share some information on that, Swamiji. The, when we are joining and taking the training, we are not supposed to keep touch with the, uh, our family. But you know, the Ramakrishna mission, the very liberal, nobody, no one will say, it is up to you. You have come of your own to become a monk. And the monk is not supposed to keep touch with the, you know, that uh, is called the Purva Asrama. Purva Asrama means the, your previous life. So for me personally, I never kept touch for uh, 10 years. Then after the sannyasa only, they said that you should go and touch the feet of your father and mother. 
So then I went and that my father was not there, mother was there. I touched the feet of, uh, touched my mother. But unfortunately, I'm telling you, uh, by that time, mother was having the sugar and she lost the eyesight. So uh, she could not see me as a monk. That was very sad. But she was touching my face and my head and, uh, and like this. And but she liked me very much. And only thing she told, mm, I'm sorry to tell this, the, can you please lie down on my the lap? Keep your head and lie down a little. So I will pat you. That's all. And then afterwards, when I was in Andaman, she passed me. Very sorry to hear about that, Swamiji. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. But th thank you for sharing the information with us. But I am I have a feeling that your mother felt very proud that you chose this path. And um, since uh, although she, she couldn't see you, she might have expressed that to you. About. That is true. That is true. Because, uh, you know, that uh, the traditional family, uh, the, uh, the, the ladies were not allowed to go alone outside, etc., but when I joined in the Ramakrishna mission, I didn't tell the family. I just went and joined in Cherapunji, in the northeastern part, you know, that Meghalaya, the, the Asama was there. I went to visit that place, liked that place, and liked the Shwadus. And then I said, can I stay? They said, you can. So I stayed there. So <laughs> the, when the news came to my mother, the mother, naturally, she was thinking what has happened. And all alone, secretly, she used to go out and to, to a temple to pray to the God over there for me. Then some of my friends, they wrote to me that your mother is behaving like this. So you should write to your mother. Then I, the Swami in charge also told you, must inform your mother and parents, father and all that. So I wrote to my mother. I'm telling you this very personal. I told my mother. Mother, if you want me to come back to the samsara, then I will surely come back. I will never say no to you. But the thing is, I am sure that I will never be happy over there. But if you allow me to stay in the monastic life, uh, I think I will be very happy. And she wrote back to me. And you know that I am a Bengali. She wrote back in a Bengali language, she told, that as a mother, I like to see my children are happy. And if you feel that you will be happy over there, all my blessings are with you. May you always be at the feet of our God. So that she blessed. That is wonderful. So inspirational, Swamiji. You are holy to us and your mother is also holy to us too. You know, for she, they're just these words that she mentioned, it, they are so touching. They're so touching. Pranams to her too. And uh, very nice of you to share these uh, personal stories with us. Thank you very much. That is very, we appreciate that. Um, and Swamiji, as you mentioned and gave us an idea, the life of a monk, it, it's almost like a lifelong tapasya. Yeah. Um, so this is something not many can understand, as you rightly said. Um, could you please uh, um, give us a little bit more idea about after you uh, become a sannyasi, after you assume a position of a monk, um, how does your disciplined life look like on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly routine? Anything that you would like to share with us? I, we do understand it's very disciplined. I think it all ro rotates around the time schedule every day. So if you could just give us a little bit of idea there, please. So, you know, that uh, and as you grow, the slowly, slowly, you become accustomed to it, taking the name of God. So previously, we used to take only in the morning and the evening and like that. Then slowly, slowly, it become a very natural, constantly taking the name of God. And in the living in the company of God, sometimes I'm talking with the people, I'm visiting different places, but at the same time, an awareness that I'm with God. And whatever is having coming before me, and I say that these are the things that I can accept and it, that not that. So this is the way you always, that is called the tapashan as Ma Shardamani Devi. Very simple way she said, what is austerity, my son? 
keeping the mind constantly in remembrance with God. So that is called tapasya. So we always do that. But for the Ramakrishna mission, Swami is, is little more difficult, you know. Those who are outside just wandering, going here and there, a little bit of clothing or sort the of food and shelter sufficient for them. But the Ramakrishna mission, Swami is, they get a lot of acceptance from the society. You know, that uh, when I was in Arunach, uh, uh, Andaman, I started uh, the three buildings uh, that Karma Mandir, Jnana Mandir, etc., etc. And I invited Bajpayee Ji, he was then the, the then the Prime Minister of India, to inaugurate. Bajpayee Ji was so humble and so wonderful person that he came, you know, on the stage itself, thousands of people over there, he came and touched my feet. So this is the man like him touching it. And if I think that he is touching my feet, then it's a great mistake. He is actually touching the feet of a monk because the Geru are cloth that I am wearing. So we should always remember that all the respect that I am getting from the society is for the cloth. And at the back of it, there is an ideology. And if I miss, forget that, I am just an ordinary person. So that is called tapasya, constantly remembering. Wherever we go, Ramakrishna Mission now, it has grown up everywhere. Wherever we go, particularly in Arunachal Pradesh, is a huge institution. I was the chief of that. With the signature, I could give the job to the people. And with the signature, I could sack them. So you can understand that uh, naturally the ego will come. Oh, I am the boss. I can do this. I can do that. You are doing the administration, and administration means assertion. And at the same time, you have to go on remembering that you are a sannyasi. Sannyasi means negation. Not this, not this. I don't want this. I don't want this. The administration and the sannyasa are together. This Swami Vivekananda has given us the so much challenge. And you are sitting in that and you have to say these or that as an administrator. At the same time, I am not doing it. Oh Lord, please be with me. You have to be humble inside. If you are showing that humbleness outside, the naturally you will, no one will listen to you. As an administrator, you have to be like this. You know, uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, in the jungle, you have to give that show up, otherwise they will they won't understand what is a monk. And if you are the, with the, the bare food you are walking or the you know, unsaved the beer and all this, they will think as a very ordinary man, as a poor man, they will never respect you. So you have to give uh, you know that in a decent way you are going, getting down from the car, two persons are op opening your car door, they can understand uh, yes. Some administrator is coming. You have to do like that. Otherwise, you cannot control. So this completely the, the balance you have to constantly go on doing. That is the challenge in the Ramakrishna mission and the Swamis. And today we were discussing all the Swamis. And I told this we should not forget. We are the administrator. And at the same time, we are sannyasi. So this too should be nicely balanced. The Swami Vivekananda taught us the Karma Yoga. This is the unique way of Karma Yoga. Whatever I am doing, doing with the power of God, this thought should be constantly 100% present in the mind. I go and give a lecture. The people appreciate. Is it my power? No. It is the power of God that is working through me. So this, you can say, is the, the tapasya. And so many people give so many things, there are so many gifts that come. Then you have to be careful how much you need. And when, when you don't need, don't say no to those people. Rather, you then share it with the others, maybe the little unfortunate people, give them. So that type of shoes and these and that, what so many people. And the people, they give me the pranami, you know, that in India, that is the whenever they go to a monk they always give some money right then i i with that money mostly the monks they do like that i am maintaining 12 students in india 
and they are studying the graduation or the doctor and becoming the medical doctor, the engineer. Uh, we have, uh, I have some uh, very close to devotee. I told them, keep this money with you. And whenever they are asking, uh, help them this way. They are helping me. And 12 elderly people, the elderly people, they are not poor. They are, the, they are also, uh, because they are having the house, they are having some food in the, but their children are not giving money to their hand. But these elderly ladies and the gentlemen, they want some money in their hand so that they can spend in their own way. So I give 2,000 rupees per month to them. So 24,000 for a year so that they can spend in their own way. From where I give? I give from the pranami. And when the person is coming and giving, offering pranami, I never say no. But I give it to him that way because I personally don't need anything. That way, thank you. Uh, it, wonderful to hear that, Swamiji. It is amazing to see how you are managing um, your role as Swamiji plus, you know, administration that you just mentioned. Also, dealing with the common man, it is a different challenge because we are not having the same mindset as you do not um, think the same way or even follow. Um, the same principles, many of us, I think. So um, that, that is wonderful to hear. So on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you um, build your required personal strength, whether it is physical or mental, to do all these various roles and, you know, successfully overcome these challenges? The, you know, the, the main thing that comes, the strength comes from the spirituality. So if you are meditating regularly in the morning, praying to God, taking the name of God, see the mantra diksha that we take, the name of God, we are going on taking the name of God, praying to the God and the mother particularly. For us, Bhagavan, Sri Ramakrishna, Ma, Sarada, Swamiji, any problem that comes, we go and pray to the mother and we say, mother, please help me. And if you think that, uh, some idea is coming, some project that I have to take up. Then I go and tell mother, if you think that it will be successful, it will be better for, well, good for the human society. So please help me so that I become successful in doing this. So that prayer and also the meditation, that is the strength. Of course, you know that they all, Swami Vivekananda said, every monk should at least do one hour physical exercise. So naturally physical exercise is also necessary to keep the body. And they used to say, you have come here to serve, not to be served. <laughs> when the one brahmachari, he was cutting the, dressing the vegetable, he okay. cut his finger and it oh. was, the naturally the blood was there. And we thought the swamis will come and say, oh my God, come here, the first aid bandit. Then the incharge swami came and said, you have come here to serve, not to be served. <laughs> he scolded him, be careful. <laughs> you are supposed to cut the vegetable, not your finger. Don't disturb us in this way. <laughs> so we have to be very, very careful doing it. This strength comes from like this, you know, the positive thinking all the time, positive thinking. Something good is going to happen. What is this life for? After some years, I will die. Then for what in this life? For two things. One, to understand that this body, whom I say I, this the physical body, is not actually me. It is that Atman. So many times I was born in different forms, in different names, in different situations, different time. But one thing is continuously going on that is my Atman. And now, only in the human form, one can understand that, not in animal form or bird or reptile, only in human form. And once you have got that human form, once you have got that idea that this is there, so why not try to achieve that, realize that? So that is the goal. And by that way, the disciplined life means whatever the, see, I am meditating. And in, in this particularly here in the Homer Glen, there's a big building. 
someone has come and the ringing the bell there is no one so i have to get up and i don't mind getting up and run, running and opening the door answering the bell call and uh, welcoming that uh, guest and talking with them oh no no this is my meditation time i am not going to talk that is one type of thing but i feel i am calling god trying to see god within my heart and god is outside my door and ringing the bell he wants to enter i should go the same god whom i see in the temple the same god in a different form as they are coming in so my continuation of prayer is goes on even if i am getting up from my asana and going and opening the door and talking with them that awareness that is the strength and that is the sadhana that keeps your mind always very level calm but it's through practice only and at the in the beginning it is very difficult the practice <laughs> practice and the grace of god then only <laughs> that is wonderful to hear just you are seeing the divinity in everybody so mm -hmm. that that is um, just just listening to the way you um, approach um, every day needs and every day challenges is just so inspiring to us that is wonderful swami ji so for the physical training that you said for an hour so that training also you get when you are um, undergoing training in belur then belur math for and they, they have that they, they always say but it is not like that in the when we were there they used to encourage us to go and play for no. 35 40 minutes the basketball the basketball and then the right. young people 25 24 years young body naturally we need the exhaustion to go and play the basketball and then wash these wash that and sometimes some people used to do some physical exercises also in majority they used to do the yoga okay. so they knew yoga so they used to practice yoga so i was not having that capacity to do the yoga because I mean, my young day, yeah, the, when I was in school, they trained me to do the boxing. You know. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. No, no, that's very interesting, Swami Ji, to know. Yes, please. <laughs> so, so we were in class uh, seventh grade, eighth grade. The the options were there. You can become a cricketer. You can join these. You can join that. So I wanted to learn boxing to defend myself and to also to protect the weaker people. so like that to myself and another friend we joined boxing we did boxing and for the boxing there is a different type of exercise and uh, like that but uh, i never then when the chances came for for some in you know, the game and play i told no i am learning it to protect myself not to beat others that is not in my mind i cannot be that cruel i'm sorry but though the teacher was wondering the why then you are here then uh, that i learned that boxing and through the boxing your body becomes very strong and very uh, because the different type of exercises after yeah. the boxing uh, that when i joined over here i used to do like a sport running and also some type of uh, walking and like this type of exercises very good very nice and very every, every day i do every day even to now every morning and evening i walk for 35 minutes okay. each time okay wonderful to hear swami ji and you also do the meditation regularly so that is good for mental health to wonderful swami ji and um, so you did mention a little bit about the andaman islands um, you were there as the founder secretary of the ramakrishna mission in port blair yeah, um, yes, would you mind sharing a little bit about your experience there because that is something that uh, boggles our mind i mean how how did you go to andaman uh, and how did you uh, you know establish the ramakrishna mission so well i'm sure there were many challenges that you faced mm -hmm. by yourself and you overcame them so this is a long long story in andaman the, mm, that uh, a group of devotees the they were having a plot of land a very prime land though at that time when i went over there the all around it was very dirty though just on the beach of that one ocean so the, i was asked to go and develop over there and slowly slowly and we started to working over there there was a tin shed building we cleaned it and then started the our prayer hall 
fast. Then there were the government wanted to give us some work. So that is called the most of the people they used to go for in the from the they call mainland, the mainland India, they used to go to that island and Andaman and Dikova are nearly 500 small and big islands, more than 500. And only 20 islands are inhabited. And the main islands was the Port Blair, and it's a long in the, from the north to south. Port Blair in the south tip. The, there, uh, we, we were there, and uh, people used to go over there, particularly the laborers from the mainland to do work over there. They used to marry the local girls. And then after some time, maybe after five years, six years, when uh, the contact was over, they used to suddenly come back to mainland. And those ladies, they never knew what to do and what they will do with the children. So the government requested us to start one, uh, the boys home like that, destitute boys home. So we started the boys home, slowly, slowly, 50, the boys we, we got, and there was no, no money, you know, that I, I, that was the first time in my life, I failed what is hunger. I failed the need for money. <laughs> one Swami gave me 1000 rupees. And every day I used to spend 10 rupees out of that to purchase some the puffed rice and this, that to for the, our breakfast. And every day I used to count, oh, from 1,000, 10 gone. The next day, this one, <laughs> that was the condition. And there was nothing except the terrible, the scorpions, big, big scorpions. Before going to sleep, you have to be very careful. The light is also dim. Sometimes there is no electricity. You have to light a lamp and they have to check the scorpions. And we used to uh, uh, put some type of powder and the lime so the scorpion should not come close to us. So like that, we used to sleep. And when you are going to the bathroom, one should be very, very careful. And you have to go before that. The stick was there. We used to make sound so the scorpions would go away. We are not stepping on that. That was the real, real challenge over there. And then terrible condition. And there is no food. So for the children, they will go to the school, the government school, and what they will eat. So we used to make the chapatis, the one big chapati for one boy. And they like to have the, what's called the egg rolls and all that. Where are the eggs? So what we used to do in the chapati, in the center, one spoonful of sugar, then roll it. And I used to give it to them and say, see, this is the sweet roll. So they were very happy. So eating sweet roll, they used to go to. And I used to really, really cry. The mother, where do you have brought me? I can't give the food to these people. And there was nothing to eat. Then slowly, slowly, there you know, Vijay, I am telling you, the, there, I really felt the God is with you. As Swami Vivekananda said, whoever will work for me, my power will enter into him. And that truly happened. The slowly, slowly, everything started the, uh, taking shape and like this. Then uh, the many, uh, the very famous people from India, they used to go uh, for you know, the private visit to um, Andaman used to stay over there, nowhere to go. So they used to come to me for chatting. So I, I met so many, like our uh, last president of uh, the, uh, India, Pranav Mukherjee, he came and stayed in, in that island. And he used to, every evening, he used to come to me, sitting before me in a bench, because there was only one chair, wooden chair. And I told, see, this is the chair of a Mahant. So <laughs> I cannot share it with you. So you have to sit on the wooden bench. He used to sit on the wooden bench, sometimes a plastic chair. And seven days he was there. I used to talk like that. And then I'm having the, trouble hearing you. The, that is, uh, and also the the lastly, what happened when I used to go to the government officers, they never helped me because they don't know you need not to be here. Local people also, they never could help me because they used to think that why we should look after the orphan children. 
So that is, you know, that they never knew the life that as we grew up in the main India, there's so many other cultural things happen. But in Andaman, it was absent. Now it is very close. So what to do and what not to do is going on, going for collection and this, that, slowly, slowly. Then the Khaitan, the Khaitan fan is there in India, Khaitan fan. So they had uh, one uh, another resort. The Khaitan's mother, she requested me to go to her place to uh, teach the Gita. I used to go over there. Then she told Swamiji, if you need some help, from there the help came. And then afterwards, our Pranam Mukherjee, he also told from the government of India, I will try to give you something. So he himself arranged it. And then I got some money. Then slowly, slowly, all things came up. And I felt the, the mother is there. The, uh, the, that time, the Indian Airlines, uh, the, they are the chief, what is that? Maybe the director and the chief person from the Bombay, he went over there. He visited me and he told Swamiji, anything that I can do? Then I requested, when your flights are coming, the only one flight used to come from Calcutta to Port Blair, another flight from Madras to Port Blair. I told the, that the, they are bringing food packets. And I saw they are throwing it out. They're just a trash. So why didn't you give those food packets to me? So I can collect those food packets and then give it to my children. It will yeah, this can be arranged. Because when the flight is going back, they will take another type of food from the local uh, the suppliers. So I used to get all those packets. And the children would be so happy having that wonderful food. So, and sometimes the VIPs, when they are going, passing, that they will all run and to go to see the, the red light that is flashing on the VIP's car. I used to tell them, look at that. Go and see how the man is going. He is sitting and getting so much of respect. One day you should also become like that. And I used to inspire them. Then I used to tell, never ever go and stretch your hand. The begging is not permitted, never. And sometimes I will tell you a funny story that uh, one boy, uh, you know, the very difficulty for the children to accept. The father is there, mother is there, but they're orphan. The mother is married to someone, the father. Uh, so that they could not accept. They used to be very, very angry. Slowly, slowly, I used to tell them, see, I don't have mother and father. See, look at that. My mother is Ma Saradamani Devi sitting over there as a picture. My father, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, as a picture. They are not looking at me. Like that, you are also Spartacan life. We don't care for anything. We leave. You know, like that, I used to inspire them. The one boy, just to get some affection, one day he cut his hand or something, and I affectionately told, Oh my God, what will happen to you? And then I brought some, you know, the, the, uh, tried to uh, the give some medicine over there, the, some bandages. That affection he liked. And every day he used to come and tell, Swamiji, Dekho khun nikal da, idhar kat gaya. Dekho, I understood that only for that affection that I will go and then I pat and casual. That is that thing that happened. One boy, he was admitted in a hospital and then our assistants, they told Swamiji, he's not taking medicine and he's lying over there. I don't know why. I, I went to the hospital. Everything free in Andaman. That is really good. So I went to the hospital and immediately understood the problem. Next to him was another young boy of his age almost. And he was having the mother, the aunties. They were, so naturally, they are patting him. Put, no, I won't eat this, I won't eat that. And they are going on. No, son, please eat. And nobody is there with him. So he was looking at him and I could feel that he wanted that type of treatment. So I went and told, see, we are Spartacans. I told you, we don't have anyone. We are fighters. You have to eat your own medicine and get ready. Uh, become all right, pack your bag and come back to Astrama. Otherwise, next day I'm not coming. Next day he came back. <laughs> <laughs> so like this, we have to 
And slowly, slowly, this uh, government of India helped me. I developed uh, over there and the very good arrangement for the boys. Now it is now it's all really good. And uh, when our Bajpayee went over there, and after that, everything became really good. So I can remember all those days that really, really wonderful. <laughs> yes, that is that is incredible, Swamiji. I mean, we have heard about the hardships that Swami Vivekananda faced when he came to the USA and, you know, throughout his life, different circumstances. But, you know, Swamiji is like you go through so much as well, where you are, wherever you are going, wherever you are establishing. So just hearing about these experiences um, it, it is just uh, very touching to us that you go through so much, but still never give up. And you are continuing to believe in the Almighty and in uh, the Holy Mother and, you know, Sri Ramakrishna. You are continuing your service for those who really don't have anybody else who need that you know, mm -hmm. presence and uh, you have inspired so many children. I'm sure they remember you lifelong, you know, although you are here now, mm -hmm. I'm sure they think about you. So that is, that is wonderful. You know, the, when uh, this type of uh, thing happened, the temptations, I was telling you. Right. So uh, I'll just mention this in Andaman, we were not having any money and no support. But at the same time, the, we were constantly praying to mother, mother, you have brought us here. So we have to look up the 50 children, please help us. So someone or other is to come. The, there will be some, the marriage, so extra food they will bring. And in India it is possible, here it is not. Right. And then someone will be observing the birthday of their children. So I told, uh, when you are doing it, prepare a little extra food and bring that uh, for our children too. So like that, yeah, slowly, slowly. At that time, the mother took and uh, the terrible and uh, so a temptation came before me. One evening, there suddenly one car came and three boxes, big, big boxes, the two, three people, they brought it to me and told Swamiji, the, can you please keep these boxes under your bed? Now bed means the wooden uh, the, the bed was there, under your bed for say four or five days. And afterwards, we will take two bags, uh, we will take back, and one bag will be for you. The boss has told. And who is your boss? They said the name. And he was a big man in Andaman. Then after I came to know that actually what happened, that they were having uh, some uh, the government raid and something, CBI raid, something was happening. So he came to know, and he was having all the extra cash, big box full of cash. And I told, open, 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 and somehow they, uh, they it was open at the one corner. I can see full bag full of money. They told Swamiji, you need not to go for begging donation to this man, that man. You can do any, do all this. Lot of money is here, and the boss told, tell Swamiji that I will help him. I told, I'm so kind of your boss, please take back. I cannot accept it. And they were insisting. I told, no, I cannot. Then we forcefully, I gave that back to them. The, we take it. Then I went to the, uh, to, to the, before the picture of Ma Sarada and told, why are you attempting me? If we don't have the money, it is okay. And what maximum will happen? We will die without food. So many people are dying without food. No problem, but don't ever tempt me like this. Mm -hmm. So that was the mother's power saved me. So this also happened, you know, that, that is called the monastic vow. So from the truth, we will never birch even an inch <laughs> before temptation, before fear. Right, right. Very, very um, extraordinary circumstances and you are still facing them with, uh, it is more than any common man can ever do, I think, what you are doing only because you have been trained that way. I think you are ready to face such circumstances and you overcome them so well. Um, we have to learn so much from you, Swamiji. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned a little bit about Arunachal Pradesh, you know. So was it after Andaman 
that you went to Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the Ramakrishna Mission School there, mm -hmm. where you were principal, come secretary? And it is amazing to know that it is situated deep in the jungle and yes. uh, it helps educate local tribes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, you know, that you are touching all the, the points which uh, I li really, really enjoy to stay. And uh, the day we inaugurated the Karma Mandira and Jnana Mandira in Andaman, the, the Dijain General Secretary of the Ramakrishna Mission, he came. And also, as I told the Atul Bihari Bajpai Ji, so that evening, the, our General Secretary Maharaj uh, asked me, uh, come and join me in a cup of tea. I'd like to talk to you. Then I immediately understood that something is going to happen. And then I joined. Then he said, you know, the administration is like this. He said, oh, you have done wonderful. They will never appreciate. <laughs> on, not on the face, of course. So they will say, uh, but he was telling, oh, wonderful uh, that you have done. And now I'm thinking to give you more responsibility. I told Swamiji, when to go? The, <laughs> are you going to give me few uh, the months so that I can arrange everything? And all through, I was there in Andaman eight years, eight long years. And you know that from the poverty, slowly, slowly things were changing. And at the fair game, one gentleman gave me a, a chair, that very good chair, cushion. And uh, th that was still under the, in the plastic pack. It was not open. So I was thinking after the program, I will open that and let's see. All through, I used to see it on a wooden chair. So, and which was having the, one, one small, uh, you know, that uh, was called that uh, the nail coming out a little. So you have to be very careful, otherwise constantly <laughs> pinching. So, so that was there. But I told Swamiji, one gentleman has given me a very nice chair. Shall I open the chair? No, keep it for the next man. <laughs> so that is the life. Immediately, he said, no, no, you would better come along with me. Next, uh, uh, I mean, within two days, I packed up and then uh, left to that Andaman. Yeah. And I was posted to Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal Pradesh, if you don't, even today, if you don't go, you will un not understand how the situation, it is a deep jungle. The, uh, it was December and I was sleeping inside my room. Suddenly the night girl, he came and told Swamiji, please come out and see the elephants are at your door. I came out and I saw two big elephants. They're touching the that uh, uh, steel door and just playing with that. So, uh, face to face, if they come in, then we are nowhere where to go. So that was the condition and big, big pythons and all those. Apart from that, the underground, the people are there. They are fighting with the government of India for a long time. You know that uh, they call it terrorist. Right. So they were also there, the terrible people, very ruthless people. So they'll be killing. We used to hear the officers are killed, these, that. So like that. So one day I received a phone call from, uh, from some of them. And he was telling in English, the the, we, I belong to so-and-so group and uh, I know that you have a lot of money and you have to pay uh, the, that money. I told I have the money, but I cannot give that money to you because this for the school. The, then he said, do you, do, don't you understand with whom you are talking? I can simply come and kill you. I, and then I told, though I was truly, I was afraid, but apparently I was telling, oh, that will be a great help for me, sir. When you come, because <laughs> the life has become very long for me, if you come and shoot me, that will be very good. But only one request, please give me some time so that I can sit before the altar of my God and shoot from the back so that my head will go and touch the feet of my God. This I, I will request. Then he said, <laughs> what type of person you are? Are you not afraid of death? Then I told, see, we are already dead because when we take the sannyasa, we, we are not going to marry. There will be no children. Who will do our the final rites? So in the beginning itself, before sannyasa, we do our final rites. So, uh, and then give, give that 
uh, uh, Sraddha, that Anna, to the Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, and tell him that this is the thing that I am keeping at your feet, and I am going to take this. So that is the sannyasa, the system. And I told, see, I am already dead because the Hindu sannyasi is like that. And they are not Hindus, they are Christians. And they told, he's a very interesting person. I will come and meet you. You are most welcome. So he, he came, maybe in disguise, I never knew. Uh, but uh, the our the uh, the Polish people came and they told Swamiji they will never do any harm to you because all over the villagers they like you and obviously uh, they are not going to ant antagonize them. Only thing when I used to go, I used to take up all anyone standing on the road, I used to go uh, ask them to uh, come. And give them the lift. And don't do that. And slowly, slowly, I developed a class in the grade one, five years old, six years old boys used to come. That was the first generation. They're coming to school. They never knew how to learn and what to do. They were always afraid. They never saw the people like us. And our body order, body smell is different than their fathers and uh, the uncles. So they used to be very much afraid. I noticed that in our junior classes, all of them, if they are 30 boys, all of them, they are failed. Then when I go and ask the teacher, the, what has happened? So why they are, so actually, they, this is like this. After two, three years, they will be picking up. That will be all right. I told, why they can't do now? So I used to observe from the distance when the classes are going on. The best teachers used to go to teach them in English or mathematics or the language and other things. But the moment the teacher is entering into the classroom, you know, the tribal boys, they have not seen uh, the, this type of people. They used to be very much afraid. And for that, they will come together and huddle and look at that uh, the teacher. They could not register that whether this man is a friend or as a the foe is going to punish us, what he's going to do. So neighbor could listen what he is teaching. Observing that, I changed the system. I told one teacher, one class. Just only A, B, C, D and Awa in Hindi. We introduced Hindi in Arunachal Pradesh, you know, so that they come to along with our mainstream in India. So that uh, that was there. One teacher, one class. And I told them, don't keep them in the classroom because they are coming from the jungle. And this school, the tie and the dress and the shoe, it's all punishment for them. At the beginning, it is okay. After that, take them out. Under the, uh, the tree, they should be there. And when you are teaching English, you teach like this. That is a that is a tree, show a tree. And this is your nose. And this is your ear, like this. They won't understand what actually you are telling. But with the sound, they'll be understanding, oh, this is nose, this is ear, this is my body, this is my hand, that is a tree, that is a bird, that is sky, like that, like that. Not A, B, C, D. Only the, this way you can. You know, the dad gave a wonderful result. And I told, put the A, B, C, D separately, the boat. One boy will be having the hanging A, then B, then C, like that, all the alphabets. Then they will go and hide. Others, they will go and find. And you will say, the teacher will say, bring the F before here, before me. And they will go and catch the F. Then A, F-A-T-H-E-R, father. So these boys will be, they will go and they will, they will find them and bring them before the teacher. They will stand and teacher will say, what is it? F, A, T, H, E, R, father. And they will say, yes, it is father. And then immediately father means Pitaji. So like that Hindi and English, and, and they used to think that they are playing, they learn and this system really gave a wonderful result. So that is the way I uh, could become very successful over there. And 
you know, there as the mother helps always all the time, and mother may be a little gracious with me all the time. Now I told mother, you have made me sannyasi, that's good, but without food I cannot stay, and when I'm hungry I lose all, everything. So please see that I get the food. And mother always protected me in that way. In Andaman, I used to teach what is Hinduism to the chief secretary, the then chief secretary. So what is this uh, the Durga Puja? Why the Durga is having ten hands? What is this Kali Puja? And well, like that. So he used to invite me. I used to go to his quarter and uh, I used to teach that. He, we became very good friends, the chief secretary of the Andaman administration. Then when I took charge in the Arunachal Pradesh, the government of India was supposed to give some fund, but we were not getting the fund at that time. My predecessor, before giving the church, he took me to Delhi to introduce with the officers. I will tell you this story, though it is becoming long, That's but a very interesting so how things happen. My predecessor, he was trying for last two years, three years to get two crore from government of India. And there was some agreement and all that and to maintain our asthma and giving the salary to the teachers and staff. It's a very big organization, like almost a village. The nearly 700 people living over there. So we have uh, the poultry, the dairy, the fishery and agriculture and uh, our generator to produce the electricity then the uh, so so many the buses the trucks the obviously the huge administration we ne need money so only two crore but that he was not getting so obviously the uh, loan was increasing and he was worried he took me to the uh, south block to introduce me with the, some of the officers. South Block means in Delhi, the main administrative building, the government of India. I went and I was going with him to be introduced with some of the officers. And when he was walking in my front, suddenly I noticed that Mr. Kapoor, the, that name, the tag was there. And I took Kapoor, I know one Kapoor of Andaman, is the same Kapoor. Let me check, but they are all big officers, you know, secretary, then assistant secretaries like that. The, the, but unfortunately, there is no peon sitting before the door. The peons, they will stop you and you cannot. Enter. As because no one was there, I took that liberty and opened that door and saw that same Kapoor, the, my good friend sitting over there. The, I told, hey, Mr. Kapoor, you are here. Then he jumped up. Swamiji, I missed you. And where you were? Then I am told that now I've been posted to Arunachal and all that. So why you were here? I told for money. Is it for money? And Arunachal comes in the northeast and government of India that time the Bajpay administration, they have developed uh, this uh, the northeastern fund and I have to spend it before March. That is the, the year end. The, so if you like to take money, I can give you 30 crore. <laughs> we were there for 2 crore. So the 30 crore that I'm, I told no, no, 30 crore is what I'm going to do. 2 and will be all right. And he said, no, 15, I will give it to you. Can you imagine? If this is not miracle, then what is miracle? And then he dictated the letter. He asked his assistant to do, then they gave the signature, then and there. And check was issued. I told, don't give so much of money because if I take it back, how will I spend? This is February. Within the March, I have to spend the whole money. Better you give me 10 crore so that I can keep it in the bank. And from the interest, I can, afterwards, I can use that money through the interest. And give me 2 crore because I have to pay the loan. I have to do this and that. So 12 will be all right. He to locate okay, 2 at 12, he sanctioned 10 for uh, keeping in the bank and 2 for. And the Swami who was with me, he was searching and he was thinking that I'm lost over there. Almost after, almost really one hour. And I should, and there was no mobile phone in those days. I couldn't contact him. So when I came out, 
He came, oh my God, I thought you were lost. I was thinking what to do. Then I told, see, miracle has happened. You came for two crore and you got 12 crore. So you were so happy. We went back. It, I told, see, this is the miracle. This is really, really the miracle. So yeah. this is the, and slowly, slowly, all those new buildings came up. And then I applied, you know, that the children's mentality, there's a very big boys hostel, class 10 and class one together. I told no. The one, two, three, four should be in one building. So I made the separate building for them. Five, six, seven, eight should be separate building because the mentality, they are children. They are thinking, they are playing, their way of talking, completely different than the class 10 boys. And when a, 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 a boy become father, his attitude changes for the children. But when he's a young man, he never likes them. Because rather, he'll be going and giving a, you know, the slapping them and doing some bully like that. Always it happens in the hostel. I told him to separate them. That gave the excellent result. And then I started adopting the villages also. I used to give them the in the villages. So that, you know, that though we are monks, but we have to be careful and then I utilized the whole land. You know how? You know, different type of people, they come to visit. The one day group of people came, I told, what is your profession? What do you do? They told, we are all tea garden managers. I told, oh my God, that's very good. Can we grow? Because 300 acres of land, 300 acres, a huge plot. Right. I told, uh, can we grow the tea? They told, yes. Then I send one young boy, is a science graduate, I will learn it, how to do it. They helped me. We grew nearly 35,000 tea plants in that year. And there were very poor people, the tea garden workers, when they become very old, they ask them to leave, where they will go. Right. So they are so poor that I called them. Then I, I told, see, these are the tea garden that you can, uh, help me to grow and whatever the income, 75% yours, 25% you have to give to the ashram. They were agree. Then I developed the coffee garden, the Robusta coffee, coffee, two di different varieties of coffee available in India. The best variety of course in South India and in uh, our places in Assam and Urunachal, Robusta. I grew the Robusta coffee. Then the fisheries, the, the pol poultry, huge poultry that I brought the uh, people from the Hyderabad. They helped me to develop that poultry and we used to get a lot of eggs for the children. <laughs> so like that, then I developed one shop. I was, uh, because it is jungle, the teachers, they used to go in a bus uh, for the marketing. I told you not to go anywhere. There should be the 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 shop will be there, right from a cycle tire to everything was available from the shop, and only five percent that you should keep on everything. And nearly eight or nine boys they got the opportunity to serve over there, and I told whatever the salary you want you have to earn, so you have to sell the thing like this jungle area if you give the salary in cash to the teachers because in those days they used to give the cash there's a chances that this type of you know the hooligans will come and snatch it from you so i contacted the state bank of india i used to give in the in one check this to get the credit and they were having the notebooks they particularly their wives the teachers and the staff's wives this to go to the fisheries, I want to purchase that fish, give a signature, the milk, then the egg, then these, then that, everything was available, vegetables. You just sign on that and it will be deducted from your salary and salary check will reach to your bank. You don't need the cash money. By that way, I really did. And I was 12 years over there. And one village which was very close to our asthma, 
I transformed them because they were not knowing how to wear the clothings even, not properly. So slowly, slowly I taught them. I used to send our bosses to bring their children. I ut utilized our uh, the, the wives of our teachers. They were also educated to start the school. Now this, everything is going on. The, and then the, I used to send the, the vehicle to the remote villages. The elderly people used to send that with the doctors. Doctors used to check, particularly the ladies, pregnant ladies, used to have a lot of problem. Our doctors and nurses used to help them, free medicine and all that. And I started one game, nothing free. You have to do something. And what they will do? A game. What type of game? The musical chair for the elderly people. And then another one rope, then a group of the two groups will be there. The rope they'll be pushing and who will be successful. Each and everyone should participate in the game. And I used to give them as a, as a gift and also presentation, the toothpaste, toothbrush, the mirror, the comb and the soap and all those things that was necessary. And for the ladies, I used to give a lot of utensils so that they can properly cook. By that way, 12 years I served over there, the living gods and goddesses. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share, you know, that all, all these things. I'm really very grateful to Swamiji for giving me this opportunity. As Swamiji said, the new India will come from this type of people. Only we have to give them the self-confidence and that afterwards they will do. I will conclude by telling to what type of people they are, they were, I should say. Now, before the independence, they were not having any contact with the modern people, these Arunachalis. Because the Britishers, they were having Assam and then the at the back, the China. In between, the Arunachal was not almost like a no man's land. As because nothing was there, Britishers never entered into that. Only after 1947, when the China and India was having the border, MacMahon line and all that, the Indian soldiers started moving into that border and then they came in contact with the modern. You can understand only after 1950. Now, in 1970, Indira Gandhi requested us to start the school and we are having the three schools and one very big hospital in Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, uh, this is the way we are working. And the part I used to work and that called that Burma, Bangladesh and China uh, uh, in between that. So that is called the Arunachal that we are having. So this way, the self-confidence I could give to them slowly. I requested one of the educated person over there. I want to make two gate in two different sides. From one place to another place, it is almost like two miles, two kilometer. So obviously it's a long. So I told in one place I like to write welcome. And another gate I like to write thank you in your language. Can you please tell me? And he said, uh, he crashed his head and said, Swamiji, give me some time. I said, what is it? Welcome and thank you. These are the two words. No, no, no. I have to talk to our seniors. Then after two, three days away, after long persuasion, hey, what happened to that? I have to write over there. He said, Swamiji, I'm sorry. In our vocabulary, there is no such word like welcome. Because as a tribe, we never wanted people to come to us. And whoever ventured to come, we killed them. So no word of welcome and thank you to whom to thank. So there is no, so that was their condition. And now from them, there are doctors, engineers, and they are, they can speak wonderful English, Hindi, and they're visiting many of them uh, that uh, they are as, as a MLA, MP, they're visiting all over India. It's a great success we can say.
that is Thank wonderful you. to hear wonderful to hear swami ji i mean uh, you lead a life of service but i from these stories i see that you have to come up with very innovative solutions for the challenges that you face wherever you are and you have to have all kinds of skills like leadership skills management skills uh, entrepreneurial skills you know so it is more than any ordinary person can ever do i i can see the all the extraordinary abilities in you and you inter in the end you know help transform societies communities whole regions so i do see from your stories how when you went to a place there was barely anything and when you are you know were accomplished all these things they they are able to survive they are able to thrive and they are able to succeed in their lives so that is wonderful uh, contribution from you and all the wonderful swami ji's of uh, reverend swami ji's of uh, uh, ramakrishna mission this is so inspiring to hear uh, okay. now swami ji and one one more yes, it, was, it was the previous three days to eat the the cows the, the beef then uh, uh, so the i told them don't eat the beef rather if, if you are growing them you can get the milk from that and i showed them how the nepalis one or two nepali family were there how the nepalis they are maintaining the cows and then milking them and selling the milk but well, slowly slowly they learned that too and you know how i used to uh, help the villagers where from the money used to come the all the extra money they used to get by selling the fish and the what is called the tea and the coffee and all those and particularly the profit that used to have from the shop so from all those money i used to keep but because i cannot spend the school money for this so this extra money that used to come I have to give it for the village development. <laughs> the one lady came from Delhi, and she was telling me, hey, "This is our Khaitan's mother. I don't know where is she now." The the Khait she was telling, "Oh, the Swamis! It is good that you have become Swami. If you were you were in the mar business, then we would have lost our business also." <laughs> so like that, you are telling us that is if you love people. so naturally you will think how to help them i think uh, mm, is in a good time is it so yes, will, yes. will you continue it is okay swami ji how about you is it okay to continue for a little bit longer okay okay sure sure is that okay okay that so we can we can quickly address a few other questions that we were having for you it is wonderful to hear about all the the journey that you had in india and uh, surrounding regions there um so Uh, you moved to chicago the same year as the 150th birth anniversary of swami vivekananda so moving to america was new how was that experience and would you be able to please especially at this significant time of the 150th yeah. birth anniversary as well as would you be able to just explain a little bit about vivekananda vedant society and the activities there for our youngsters and for um indian americans here please it is see here after coming over i i was not knowing so suddenly the belurmot uh, the our headquarters gave me a call that you have to go to chicago i was in arunachal and 12 long years in arunachal then suddenly the call came you have to go to chicago from the jungle from the <laughs> from the sea to jungle from jungle to chicago i told it is okay shami ji then uh, uh, what i should do then i came to know when i came to headquarters they gave me the file and i came to know there's a more than millions and a few millions the loan the my predecessor swami ji to construct this particular building that we are sitting in the homer glen the loan was there and then i told to the general secretary maj the main administrator swami ji i don't know how many zeros are necessary to make a million and you were sending me <laughs> how i will pay the million the, the loan will you believe bijaya i came over here and with that huge loan and no devotees are coming but for different reason nothing was there i never knew anything 
I re, uh, rather I never could remember the name of the places, who is coming from where. So that was the situation. Then, and when uh, I was coming in Delhi, it was the 12th of January, the President of India invited all of us, uh, different ministers also, that uh, Pranab Mukherjee, and in the presidential uh, place, he was organizing 12th uh, that January, Shami Vivekananda's birthday, the Youth Day. The, I went, the, the many Swamis were also there. Then the, he was uh, recapitulating and he forgot me by that time, naturally. The, he was there in Andaman. The, he couldn't recognize, all Swamis look same. <laughs> <laughs> then he was telling, now that 150th birth anniversary is coming, so what uh, uh, you Swamis are going to do in the Chicago itself? But my predecessor Swami, he was in hospital, he, his health was not good at all. Then suddenly one uh, the, our General Secretary Maharaj told, this Swami is going to Chicago, within a few days he will reach over there. Then he told me, oh, you're going to Chicago, organize in a great way so that the people should know the Vivekananda became Vivekananda in Chicago itself. So I came and I was thinking what to do. The one gentleman came, he told, Swami, we will, I will help you to do it. In different occasions, and I was sharing this idea, how to do and what we should do. Then he said that I will give you $50,000 to organize the whole thing. The another the gentleman told or his friend that I will give you all money and bring at least 100 Swami from Belarus. I told it is not possible anyway, but we can invite the Swamis in the foreign countries. They don't need the permission in that way. So it is okay. So that was planned. Everything was ready. I printed the invitation later and forwarded that to the Swamiji's. Many of them applied and got the visas from the different countries they were coming. And it was only, I think, uh, the week or so before that, these two gentlemen came and told the Swami, we are sorry, we won't be able to help you. Can you imagine? So, so that condition, so what I should do then? Because we already booked the hall that, what is that, uh, the hotel? Uh, that, Hilton, uh, Hilton. The hotel Hilton. Hotel Hilton Hall, that is 2,000 sitting capacity. And uh, every day they charge $50,000 every program. And that gentleman told, I am going to book it for you. He booked it. Now we have to pay where we'll get the money. The, all these things were happening. Again, will you believe? That's why I say always, there is God. Only thing we forget. And I went and prayed to the mother. Mother, what mistake I have done? Why the people will now look at me and say, look at this fool. He was not having anything, no money. And he has invited all the Swamis from all over the world. And 700 uh, the devotees coming from Japan and all other places. What will happen? So in this condition, when I prayed, Next day, I went to this Hindu temple of Le Mont to give a class over there. One lady came after the class. Swami, can I come and meet you in your office in the Astama? I will come with my husband. I said, okay, please come. She came and she told, the Swami Jai came to know that uh, you need some money. I will give you $50,000. See, one, he promised and we organized and he withdrew the and then left, never kept the promise. But the other came to support me. Another lady came and she told, I will give you also the 55,000. Then, of course, the others, they came forward. They gave little, little money. And by that, we could organize a huge program. I gave the name Chicago Calling. Yes. And in America, you know, if you have the, any program, it should be only Saturday and Sunday. Maybe Friday evening, the other people are so engaged, they will never. And the whole week was the program. 
and 700 devotees came from Japan, from South Africa, from these, from that places, and they were in two, three hotels. Our devotees booked the buses. No single incident happened. No one became sick. And we took them to the Ganges and so many places. It is really, really, it was wonderful. And after that, I am really confident in Andaman, in Arunachal Pradesh, and in Chicago is the same God is with me. I cannot do anything. I am a very small person. But the great things are happening through me because the mother has chosen me. As in the Bhagavad Gita, when the Arjuna was telling I should not fight, etc., etc., it is Krishna told that I have already done everything, O Arjuna. Don't think that you are going to do. Everything, everything has been done. Only thing that I chose you, that you should be over there. And similarly, Shami Vivekananda said, think yourself blessed because you have been chosen for this job, this work. Anyone can, could do it. So be humble and be blessed. I'm telling you, Vijay, I really, really, I feel humble when I think about this. How could I do it? So that is my experience. And my confidence in the existence of God increased thousandfolds after these experiences. I, I can only imagine, Swamiji, I mean, such an event of a huge event, you know, and the challenges that you faced were so unexpected, but still you were able to come through and make the successful, it make it so successful. That is wonderful. And I do be believe in the power that we have. And what you said was so right. I think you're, you had the purest intentions. And as you said, you're the chosen one. So God is with you. So that is, yeah, it is a wonderful story to hear and your experiences. And now that you are the president of Vivekananda Vedanta Society, we do know that um, uh, very amazing events and activities are happening now through the pandemic, you know, virtual events are happening. I do know that Vivekananda Vedan Society is closed right now for in-person visit. Um, it will take some time, I believe, for you to open up. But, you know, I would also like for you to maybe um, help us understand what are the different activities that... Uh, folks can who are interested, aspirants can be involved in right now uh, through the pandemic that um, they that can help them as well, Swamiji. So you are correct that uh, we cannot uh, allow people to come in big groups, but individual people are coming and we told them, please maintain this. We have kept the sanitizer and all. They come, they play and go because the Indians, they cannot uh, stay without temple. So obviously they come and they go individual prayer and go. And all of our classes are online. I give a lot many classes. And mainly in the first Friday, I give Gita classes with the Nepalville. And the first Saturday morning, I give uh, one scripture study. Now we are studying the, <coughs> that, uh, uh, the, what is called the um, Narada Bhakti Sutra. And in the afternoon, again, another uh, Gita class with uh, the other group. And uh, Sunday morning, I give the, our regular classes. And Sunday afternoon, another class. So all online are going on. And there's a class for uh, the Trinidad Tobago. And apart from that, sometimes the request is coming from the uh, UAE, the uh, Abu Dhabi and sometimes from other places, from India, regular classes are going on. And that is the job the Sunnasi should do. What else we should do? We become tired, but at the same time, what happened, you know, that when uh, we are talking, we are reading or explaining the scripture, it is also helping me. Those people, maybe they are getting the help. And as a Vedanta society, we only inspire people to be very, very honest and moral so that 
someday they will understand they are truly the self which is the source of joy a joy and eternity surely this experience will come that exactly what trying to do you will be happy and through you i like to uh, tell all the listeners and the viewers that we have purchased an old 125 years 30 years old church in chicago city and uh, there we'll be developing uh, i have given the name home of harmony there's a huge church the home of harmony now for the last one year because of the pandemic we were not getting the permission for the renovation recently they have permitted renovation work is going on and uh, there with the platform to bring different religious faith should be there on the same dais and discussing about their own views the god from the viewpoint of the christians buddhist hindu jew like this all so together we can do and at the same time the different sects of the hindus we are going to invite them to be there and discuss like though we are vedantin but we worship sri krishna sri ramachandra and there are people they are also worshiping sri krishna what is the difference almost all the hindus they are worshiping the krishna they are worshiping the rama they are worshiping the durga the shiva then why we are separate why we can't help each other appreciate each other so these are the discussions i am planning to do on that platform home of harmony then another activity will be the school of world religions and uh, in the school of world religion you will be very happy uh, that even uh, anyone uh, interested can join the no charges any donation they like they can give this for that we are going to launch from the first march the hinduism online course for the 10 months so that already it is started so from the first march at 10 o'clock it will be launched the first for the last two for two months you will get the study material study that then there will be question answer and you will you can understand how much you have studied then next two months next two months like this will go and we will have the yoga uh, section was there i was requesting you for a yoga teacher do you remember so then the, there will be children's uh, the cultural classes also so they will be learning how to sing the bhajans and also the drawing painting and along with that i like to bring the elderly ladies together from different communities and they will be exchanging the recipes of their cooking you know uh -huh. so <laughs> because the how the jews jews they are preparing the food how the this uh, hindus are doing it other muslims are doing it together when they are so they will become good friends and all of them one lady will have her friend in every community in every religious groups so that will broaden their heart when you go and give the lecture of philosophy that goes over the head most of the time oh yes that's a good words he has said but to be, bring them together to make that we are all human being are the same so these are the policies i am thinking and there will be a mumukshu nivash the those who are really sincere um, to start practicing meditation and starting to uh, understand the spiritual life we will give the opportunity i think we can keep 14 people together there will be meditation room personal meditation room and all this so these are the activities uh, that is uh, we are going to start maybe from the september before that everybody will be vaccinated things will be to some extent normal so we are planning in that way as a vedanta society we cannot do anything else but boosting up the morals you know so that is what is vedanta two things self confidence i can do not ego self confidence i can do and second is 
others are also like me. They are not separate. When somebody is praising me, I feel happy. And the other one is also expecting the same thing. When I get insulted, I feel miserable. The same thing with others. So understand this much and that will be sufficient. And that is Vedanta. <laughs> Thank you, Swamiji. All these are wonderful initiatives that you are taking. Um, to bring people together and, you know, as you said, boost the self-confidence. And this changes and impacts the life of um, everybody. That is wonderful to hear. And now looking at the time, although we do have very a lot of interest to learn more about Vedanta philosophy, um, I am thinking uh, maybe we could perhaps have another session just to focus and understand the philosophy of Vedanta, mm -hmm. and we could ask you more questions. Would that be okay for you? Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That, that would be good. wonderful. I'm sorry we took more time than we had expected. No, 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 but... I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank very you, happy. Swamiji. I, I'm happy to hear about all these stories, interesting experiences, and how you used the, um, I don't know, the amazing ability and the power vested in you by God to overcome these challenges that is great i mean you are divine and you have divinity in you as well as the god is always with you you know with all the um, amazing ventures that you have taken you have successfully completed in andaman in arunachal pradesh and now in chicago you are doing amazing job so thank you swami ji just your presence alone today is uh, holy for us and uh, you have shared a lot of like wealth of knowledge and wisdom with us today. Appreciate that. And we do look forward to hosting you another time so we can, all of our audience can uh, gain more knowledge from you about Vedanta philosophy. And thank you so much for accepting our uh, humble invitation to be on our program today. Thank you, Vijay. Thank, thank you, you, the whole Vivar and uh, all, all the people that associated. I'm really, really happy. The only thing that as a monk I can do, I can pray for you. I pray to the Almighty God, all of you be healthy and happy. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, 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 Swamiji. Thank you so much. May your blessings be with us always at Bharat FM, at Utsahi Yoga Foundation, and all of our audience members. May your blessings always be with us, and we will always be uh, with you in terms of listening to your discourses and learning more from you, Swamiji. So thank you once again for your time, and I will approach you again take another um you know time for from you um for okay. uh, another session so we can talk more about vedanta philosophy thank you so much swamiji and okay okay namaste. i'm leaving the studio right the studio. Yes. yes please yes please To our viewers, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this program today of Vijayapatha with Rev Reverend Swami Ishatmanandaji, President Vivekananda Vedanta Society of Chicago. The stories that we heard were incredible, the experiences of Swamiji and the life of, the, of our Swamiji's of the Ramakrishna Mission, they are all so inspiring to us. So we learned more uh, about Swami Ishatmanandaji's life journey. And in our next episode with Swami Ishatmanandaji, let us all take some more time to understand Vedanta philosophy more. I hope you will come back to watch that program with us. And please do send your feedback and requests to us at info at bharatfm.com. And please stay with us, take care of yourself, stay happy and stay healthy until then. Namaste.